In this video, we're going to take a look at solutions, which are a type of mixture used a lot in chemistry. We'll look at some different kinds of solutions, we'll see how they're made, and we'll look at some general characteristics that all solutions have. So, to start off with, what's a solution? Well, a solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Homogeneous is an important word here. And it means that the parts are evenly distributed, that there is a uniform, even distribution throughout. Let's take a look at this. Let's say we dissolve a little drink mix in water and we stir it around. The parts mix together evenly and we get a homogeneous mixture or a solution. Take a look at this uniform, even distribution. We can look at it here, or we can look at it here, or we can look at it here, and all areas are the same as anywhere else in the solution. Everything is evenly distributed. The parts mix evenly, okay? Now, to better understand this, let's do a comparison with something that isn't a solution. So, we've got our solution, or our homogeneous mixture right here, and the parts mix evenly. It's uniform. Over here, we have a heterogeneous mixture where the parts do not mix evenly. We have oil here and water here. You can see the different parts distinctly. This is not uniform and even, and this is not a solution. Now, if you have a heterogeneous mixture like this, you can stir it up or you can shake it up and you can temporarily form what's called a suspension, which looks like this. Everything is kind of all mixed up in there together. But that's only temporary. Eventually, everything is going to settle back out, it's going to separate back out, and you're going to end up like this again. So the parts eventually separate out when you have a heterogeneous mixture. But on the other hand, the parts of a solution essentially never separate. They're just going to stay mixed basically forever. So that's solutions versus not solutions. Let's start getting into the details of solutions. First off, the parts. Every solution has two parts. Let's say we're dissolving sugar in water. The substance we're dissolving, we call that the solute. Here, that's the sugar. And the substance the solute is dissolving in, we call that the solvent. So the solvent would be water here. So, in other words, the solute dissolves in the solvent. You can see that right here. Now, a solution can have more than one solute, but it can only have one solvent. So, for instance, we could take some salt and we could also dissolve that into this solution. So, salt would also be a solute along with the sugar, and we'd have two solutes, but the solvent is still just water. So, Solutes dissolve in the solvent. Now, to add a little bit more, the solvent is usually the substance that's present in the greatest amount, and the solute or solutes are what we have less of. But there are exceptions. Anyway, let's talk a little bit more about solutes. So, here we have the solutes that we've talked about so far. We got drink mix, we got salt, we got sugar, and we saw those dissolved in a liquid, in water, to make a solution. Now these are all solids, but solutes don't have to be solids. We can also make a solution by dissolving a liquid into another liquid, and we can make solutions by dissolving gas into liquid. So now, let's look at examples of some of these other solutions. Here's an example where we make a solution by mixing two liquids. The rubbing alcohol in your medicine cabinet is a solution of isopropyl alcohol mixed with water. These are two different liquids. You can stir them together and they spread out through each other, dissolving evenly and uniformly. And the liquids don't separate out over time. So this rubbing alcohol that we end up with this is a solution. Now, 
If you were looking at the labels here, you might have wondered why we said that water is the solvent and alcohol is a solute, because it looks like we kind of have the same amount of both. Well, just so you know, we sometimes say that water is the solvent even when we don't have more of it, even when it's not present in the greater amount. You don't have to worry about this too much, just you can keep an eye out for it. Anyway, here's another good example of a solution that we make by mixing liquids. This is antifreeze, which is used in cars to help cool the engine. Antifreeze is made by taking propylene glycol, which is a thick, clear, viscous liquid, and mixing it with water. Now, sometimes there's a little fluorescent dye in there as well. That's another solute. But as you'd expect, the liquid solution that we get is homogeneous. It looks uniform in composition, and it doesn't separate out or settle out over time. Now, you can also make a solution by dissolving a gas into a liquid. If you dissolve carbon dioxide gas in water, you make seltzer. Here, the gas is the solute and the liquid is the solvent. And if you take that seltzer and you add some flavoring and sugars, those are also solutes, but they're not gases, you get soda or pop. And in these bottles, as you can see, the mixtures are nice and uniform. Another example of a gas dissolved in liquid is ammonia cleaning solution. This is a solution of ammonia gas solute that's dissolved in water. Now, if you think about all the solutions that we've looked at so far, you might notice that they're all in the liquid state. They're all liquids. And we call these liquid solutions. If your solvent is a liquid, your final solution will be in the liquid state no matter what the solute is. So the solute can be solid, it can be gas, it can be liquid. If the solvent is liquid, the final solution will also be liquid. And going a step further here, we saw that all of our solutions had water as a solvent. And that's not really unusual because water is the most common solvent in chemistry. Yeah, sometimes you'll see others, but water is by far the most common. We have a special name for these solutions. Aqueous solutions are solutions where water is a solvent. You might know that aqua means water, and that's where the name aqueous comes from. Aqueous solutions are super common. They're all over your house. Most beverages are aqueous solutions, and most of the solutions that we use in the chemistry lab are aqueous solutions as well. So they're really everywhere. So, just to review here, we've talked about liquid solutions and aqueous solutions have been the star. But not all solutions are in the liquid state. They're also non-liquid solutions. These aren't usually what we think of when we think of solutions and dissolving, but they're also very important. So to finish up this video, we'll talk about solutions of gases and solutions of solids, which are often metals. So, we'll start with solutions of gases. Whenever we mix gases, they usually blend together evenly. And so we usually form a solution or a homogeneous mixture. The most common solution of gases is the one that you're breathing right now. Air is a solution or homogeneous mixture. And it's a mixture of nitrogen, oxygen, and a bunch of other gases. Now, how can we tell that air is a solution. Well, if you took a sample of the air at one place, that's right here, and then compared it with a sample taken close by, over here, your two samples would have a uniform composition. They'd contain the same proportion of gases evenly distributed throughout each other. And also, the gases in air don't separate out over time. So, we need oxygen to breathe, but you never have to worry that one day all the oxygen is going to separate out and float up into the sky. So for air, the composition is even and the gases don't separate out over time. 
We're definitely talking about a solution here. And now finally, there are also solutions that are made from mixing solids together. An alloy is a homogeneous mixture or a solution of metals. Now, how do you dissolve and mix solids together? It's actually pretty cool. You make an alloy by taking two different metals, or sometimes more, and then melting them and mixing them together while they're still molten. After they cool and solidify, the two metals are evenly spread throughout each other. But to your naked eye, it looks like one single metal, nice and uniform, which is the hallmark of a solution. People make alloys because they have better properties than the individual metals alone. One of the first alloys that people learned to make was bronze, which is a mixture of copper and tin. And steel is an alloy of a metal and a nonmetal, iron and carbon. And most steel also contains some other metals besides iron. The important thing to remember here is that alloys are solutions or homogeneous mixtures. The parts are evenly distributed and the alloys look uniform to the naked eye. So, let's review what we've talked about here. A solution is a homogeneous mixture made by dissolving a solute into a solvent. Because a solution is a homogeneous mixture, these substances are evenly distributed, and so the solutions have a uniform appearance. A liquid solution is in the liquid form, and it's made by dissolving a solid, a gas, or a liquid into a liquid solvent. Most liquid solutions that we talk about in chemistry are aqueous solutions, which means that water is the solvent. But keep in mind that solutions can also be mixtures of gases, or they can be mixtures of solids like metal alloys. So that is an introduction to solutions.